The official definition of the parallax effect hurts my remaining three brain cells. But the simple definition is the effect that makes objects that are closer to you appear to be moving at a different speed than objects that are far away from you when you're moving. The effect can be apparent when you're moving forwards, backwards, sideways, or even when you're orbiting around an object. You can observe the effect when you're driving down the road and you notice that the trees and the signs that are close to you appear to be whizzing by and the clouds and the mountains in the background appear to be barely moving. Here's an example of the effect orbiting around the Avengers. You can create the effect when you film something and you can also do it in the edit to make your animations come to life and feel like they're in 3D. All of the elements I use in this tutorial are linked in the description below, so go ahead and download them right now. We're first gonna create this effect with an image coming towards us. To do that, we need a photograph of somebody cute. How about my wife? Now, we could just cut Leela out and then separate her from the background, create a new layer, but it's gonna look better if we take one picture with Leela in the frame and then another picture with Leela out of the frame like this. And now I could just cut Leela out here in CapCut by using the cutout tool, just clicking auto cut out and bam, she's separate from the background. We can animate her. And actually it looks pretty good, but it looks a little better. I did it in Photoshop. So we're just gonna use that image right here just so it's slightly cleaner like that. And all we have to do is animate these two layers independent from each other. To do that, I'm gonna click on this background. I'm gonna scale it up to like 130. And I want the background to be receding away from Leela to make the effect more dramatic. So I'm just gonna click on this layer, make sure it's highlighted, select this keyframe here, which adds keyframes for scale, position, and rotate. I'm gonna go to the end of the timeline by hitting the down arrow and going back one frame. I'm just gonna scale this down to 100. It's gonna be kind of dramatic. And with nothing else happening, it just looks like that, which is kind of cool. But I want Leela to be coming towards us. So I'm gonna select Leela's layer, click on the same keyframe, and I'm going to move to the end of the timeline, the down arrow, and then the left arrow to go to this last frame. And then I'm gonna scale Leela up quite a bit, maybe 120 or so, and I'm gonna pull her down so her eyes stay at about the same level. Before I show you what this effect looks like, and also a side-to-side -side effect we're gonna do right after that, if you're really serious about YouTube and you wanna become a YouTube rock star, you really need my course, Edit with Trev and Master CapCut. I teach you everything you need to know about CapCut to make insane videos, and also show you how to get more views and subscribers on YouTube. It's like 10 steps. Do these steps, you get more views and subscribers every time, guaranteed. Don't like it for any reason, I'll give you all your money back. Here's what this effect looks like so far. That's the parallax effect. To make it even cooler, CapCut's got some really cool effects. If we just jump into effects and type in fog, I'm so giddy they have search bars now. We'll just take this fog and drag it down in between these two layers, make it last the entire duration. And if I click on it and look over here, there are some parameters I can adjust. So I'm gonna turn the speed, let's turn the speed up. Let's see what this looks like. And here's what our first parallax effect looks like. Next, let's do a side-to-side -side parallax. We're gonna delete this, jump back into our footage. And I've taken a picture of a country road near my house, and we want a truck to go down the road and look cooler than just a truck going down the road. And these are with still images. Now, I want the road to move at one speed, the sky to move at a different speed, and the truck to move at another speed. So what I've done is I've cut the sky out and created this image right here. And behind that, we're gonna have some clouds. So I'm just gonna drag this down here, drag this on top, bring it back down like that. It kind of works that way. So now I've got some clouds that I can move here. And we also want a truck. And I've taken this picture of a crazy dude in my truck who happens to be my son. We could make the truck fly too. That'd be cool, right? That's my, uh, that's my son-in-law and they're acting nuts. And we're going to, first adjust the sky and make it a little bit bigger because we want to bring it up a little bit and we want to be able to move it. And if my truck's going that way, the sky's going to be going that way relative to it, but it's going to be moving slowly. So I'm going to position my playhead at the beginning of the clouds. So I want to start with the sky. We'll put it right here so it looks a little less ominous. I'm going to set a keyframe right here. I'm going to go to the end of my timeline with the down arrow and then back one frame. And I'm going to just move my sky, I don't know, about like, like, that. And right now with nothing else happening, the sky is moving. So cool. Next, I want the road to move. And these are pretty high resolution photographs. So I'm going to drag this and make it much bigger so there's more room to play with. And the road's going to be going that way relative to the truck. So I'm going to start it right here and bring it down. I don't know, that looks good. I'm going to be able to see the sky and the road. So let's start it right about here. And we're going to make the road move that way. So I'm going to position my plate at the beginning, set a keyframe for all of these properties. 
and go to the end of the timeline. And now I'm just going to move the road. And when I move the road, it's going to add another keyframe down here. I'm going to drag it back this way a bit. And I want to make sure that the Y axis stayed the same. So it didn't go up and down. So I see that this is 386. And if I go back to the first keyframe, I see that's 289. So let's keep them all at 289. So I'm just going to jump back to the second keyframe with this arrow and go 289. So it doesn't move. Bam. And now we need to position and scale the truck. So I'm just going to click on the truck. It's going to scale the truck down a little bit so it's the right size relative to the road and gives us, you know, kind of more room to play with. Position where I want them to start, maybe right over here off screen. And I want to make sure before I set any keyframes that the playhead's at the very beginning. So I'm going to set keyframes for the truck right here. Now I'm going to go to the end of the timeline, down arrow, left arrow, and I'm going to move the truck where I want it to end up over here, maybe off the screen. Before I show you the final result, you're going to love my video on advanced animations in CapCut, so you can animate like Magnates Media. That's that video right here, which you're going to click on right after we watch the final result. Uh -huh.